for the Auburn Tigers, 1988 began in New Orleans, Louisiana, with a New Year's Day appearance in the Sugar Bowl as the champions of the Southeastern Conference. To return to the Superdome 12 months later would require an encore of their championship performance. It would take a deeper commitment, an even greater effort. Let's go, head back, head back, let's go. The world will write our 16 fan on one, ready? Now let's play football, fundamental hard-nosed football. Get it! No Auburn football team had ever won back-to-back -back SEC titles. But this 1988 squad accepted that challenge and dared to become one of the finest football teams in Auburn history. Quest to repeat began on a rainy September afternoon against SEC rival Kentucky. New leaders hope to fill the shoes of last year's heroes and write their own chapter in Auburn football history. Tailback James Joseph rambled for 110 yards and two touchdowns relieving any apprehension about the state of the Tigers' ground attack. The defense, without many of its big play specialists from 1987, passed its first test with flying colors, stopping two Wildcat scoring threats in the fourth quarter. The hours of preseason practice had paid its first dividend in a 20 to 10 victory. And the Tigers gave evidence of the kind of backbone they would need down the stretch run. Still two months away. Well, from January, uh, when the workout through spring and fall, we had to develop our own unit. And uh, a couple of guys emerged for uh, the leadership spots in Tracy, uh, Reggie Slack on offense, James Joseph, and I guess myself on defense. And so we, we basically knew what we had to do, and we got the job done from January. It just didn't happen from fall. One setback, that's Joseph Reggie, a short drop, and he's going to throw long this time in the end zone. Over the shoulder, catch, touchdown, Auburn! Alexander Wright beat Rodney Harris, the cornerback. The instant emergence of all-SEC quarterback Reggie Slack propelled the offense into high gear. He blitzed Kansas with four touchdown passes, resulting in a 56-7 trouncing of the Jayhawks. By season's end, he led the SEC in passing efficiency. But statistics fail to fully describe the abilities of Reggie Slack, a player whose strength, confidence, and coolness under pressure made him a natural leader. Well, I've been around, you know, I don't say that I've been around all of the quarterbacks, but I've been around a few great ones. And of all the guys that I've, all the quarterbacks that I've been around, I, I guess, uh, Reggie probably, personality-wise, as far as his emotions on the field, <coughs> is probably more like Kenny Stabler than any of them. And the thing about Reggie is that, you, you know, you, you hope what you see and it's true, but you never, you couldn't, you couldn't really put your finger on it until you saw him under, under fire and in the competition. Out on the field, I, I just try to be myself, and, uh, and however I come across, uh, I think, you know, that's the way uh, it's either going to be beneficial or, or it's going to be it was going to hurt the team. And, and so far, it's been beneficial. I think that uh, 
me being cool on the field has has helped other guys to to maintain their composure and uh, help them to be sharper all season. Good afternoon, everybody, from Jordan Hare Stadium on the campus of Auburn University. Today, the Tigers entertain the always tough Tennessee Volunteers. The Tigers hope to dazzle their fans and a national television audience with a virtuoso performance against Tennessee. They looked picture perfect on a 75-yard slack to Alexander Wright touchdown connection in the first quarter. But overall, the Tigers appeared to be battling stage fright as they clung to a narrow 10-7 lead at halftime. Well, at halftime, Coach Dyer stressed to us that we, we were playing hard, but we weren't playing as hard as we could play. And, uh, and when we came back in the second half, you know, we needed to turn the ball over, make Tennessee turn the ball over. And that's what we did. We, we wanted to play the defense that Auburn's uh, capable of playing and, and coming up with big plays, and that's what we did. When the third quarter began, all the Tigers needed was a spark. It came in the form of a play that has become known simply as the hit. All SEC cornerback Carlo Cheatham's fumble recovery turned Jordan Hare Stadium upside down, unleashing an overwhelming Auburn assault. When the dust had cleared, Auburn had crushed the Volunteers 38 to 6, revealing the true character of its dominating defense and signaling All-American Tracy Rocker's full recovery from knee surgery. I had to let it take its course and get my rhythm back down and just adjust to playing the game. And, um, and the first two games were like that, going through that stage of just adjusting. And then Tennessee came and the stage was set. I, I felt like that was the old defense that I played with last year. And I mean, everything was just the same and everybody was playing just as hard. And it was nice to get that feeling back. The emotional high of the Tennessee triumph propelled the Tigers to an easy victory over North Carolina, which meant Auburn would be undefeated for the showdown with LSU in Baton Rouge. But the dream of winning at Tiger Stadium would not come true. Motion by Moss back toward the ball. Hanson with some time to throw. Hanson in the end zone. Touchdown. Eddie Fuller was open. Same play. It was exactly the same play that he hit him on the back of the end zone and didn't score. Ironically, the loss to LSU convinced Coach Dye that this team could again challenge for the SEC title. After watching our team prepare to play LSU and then going into Baton Rouge where everybody talks about how tough it is to play and that sort of thing and watch uh, the mature way in which they handle that uh, game on the road and then of course the way they played the game. I felt better about our football team and, and the fact that it was a true championship caliber football team than certainly than I did going into the game. Right red, 49 low, second sign already. Although heartened by October victories over Akron and Mississippi State, the Tigers realized that the outcome of the Florida, Georgia, and Alabama games would determine their ultimate fate. The intensity level moved up a notch as they approached that buzzsaw that has become known as Auburn's Amen Corner. The Tigers were as mentally tough and as physically prepared as they had ever been when they began the stretch run October 29th at Florida. But Auburn had not won at Florida Field since 1972. And at times, the jinx seemed as formidable as the Gators themselves. This year, however, things would be different.
Auburn's nearly impenetrable defense allowed just 13 yards rushing all day. The onslaught was unrelenting. In the fourth quarter, the Tigers began to look forward to feasting on Gator meat when all-SEC linebacker Quentin Riggins intercepted at midfield. Morris wants to throw. Morris guns a pass. It is intercepted at midfield. To the 45, to the 40, the 30. One man has a chance at the 25, to the 20, and knocked out of bounds with a fly. Then Stacy Danley delivered the knockout blow. Slack gives it Danley. Danley tripped up in the backfield, regains his footing, got a block. He's at the 10, the 5. He's in! But the unsung hero of the Florida victory was all-conference punter Brian Schulman, who consistently kept the Gators' backs against the wall. The 16-0 shutout was especially sweet because it kept the Tigers on track to the Sugar Bowl and got a very stubborn Gator off the Tigers' back. Don't can't describe how happy I am for you. It's been a long time coming, mm -hmm. and for my own personal reasons, you know, I, I it, uh, and it, you know, I guess it's when you get down to it, it's probably selfishness on my part. It means a great deal to me, and um, and Auburn University. Been 16 years, man, since we won right here, and you did it in style. You did it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> The victory marked the third consecutive shutout by Auburn's defense and was indicative of the incredible dominance it displayed in 1988. No SEC team gained 100 yards rushing against Auburn all year, and the Tigers led the nation in nearly every category of team defense. Its strength radiated from the front line, where three All-SEC seniors, Benji Rowland, Tracy Rocker, and Ron Stallworth, gave all they had, every play, every practice, every game. Well, yeah, uh, you know, when I came to Auburn, I, you know, I looked back at the tradition. I knew Auburn had a great tradition in putting, uh, you know, linemen in the pros and just being great people. And, uh, you know, to, to be a part of it is really special to me because, you, you know, you learn great techniques from Coach Hall and, you know, you learn other, other things from uh, great players like Tracy Rocker, Ron Stallworth. So uh, it's meant a lot to me to be able to play for, with those guys and for Coach Hall. How good are you? What time is it? Let's go. How good was it? Perhaps the finest in Auburn history. And that's saying something. For every ounce of talent it possessed, it had double that amount of heart. It had a hunger for hitting and a penchant for making the big play. It takes great defense to win championships, but it also takes commitment, sacrifice, and team unity. From the beginning, this team set high standards for itself. First, because it had the talent, but also because it realized an opportunity existed to do something that had never been done at Auburn. Repeat as SEC champions. I mean, it's something that's not done too often, you know. You know, being a senior, you know, means the most to me, you know. Being able to repeat as an SEC champion, you know, the ring signifies a lot in itself. You know, it signifies that we are champions. You know, that's something that we're going to have for the rest of our lives. I mean, you know, this is the year that Rodney Garner is going to be remembered for right here, his senior year. Last year is over with, you know, and that's not, that was not my team. That was Stacy Cerro's team. This is Rodney's team right here. On the offensive line, it was also Jim Thompson's team and Stacy Dunn's team. They could be matched in size, but not in desire. 
and the stability of the line enabled Auburn to employ a diverse blend of offensive weapons. Freddie Wigan and Lawyer Tillman etched their names into the Tigers' record book. All-America tight end Walter Reeves earned praise for his blocking and receiving ability. The running game asserted itself in 1988 as James Joseph and Stacy Danley complemented each other perfectly. I think the, uh, the key was to, when James Joseph moved the fullback and uh, the things he did blocking, um, flicking on the films, you know, I, I, I should have give, given him a lot more credit than I did because he, a lot of the runs that I made, he, you know, it was because of him and uh, he did a great job. And that's something that we lacked early in the season. And he came in and did a great job for us. He adjusted well and, um, you know, he was one of the keys for the Russian game to come on strong like it did. With Danley following Joseph, the offense showed its best balance of the year going into the annual showdown with Georgia. <laughs> Tiger fans were certainly ready to celebrate a victory over the Bulldogs. But then an Auburn tailgate party is always a celebration. It's a unique happening that brings Auburn people together every football weekend. Meeting the people and uh, seeing all the great Auburn fans and uh, and, and just, just being in Auburn and part of Auburn family. Where you, buddy? Where you go? Where you go? Where you go? Where you go? Coach Dye often speaks of playing with the same heartbeat. To sacrifice self. To work as one for the ultimate goal. Slack looking to throw, pump fakes, sets up, fires Tillman, he's got it! It's This day, he expected a great effort, but his team gave even more. They knew what was at stake and responded with their finest performance of the year. A win Lyle field goal out of a Brian Schulman hole gave the Tigers the halftime lead and set the stage for an unforgettable second half. Linebacker Brian Smith personally took the bite out of the Bulldogs attack with an SEC Defensive Player of the Week performance. All-SEC quarterback Reggie Slack made all the plays in the biggest game of his career. Mixing the passing game and the ground attack to perfection, the Tigers wore down the Bulldogs and then put them away to the delight of a record Jordan-Hare Stadium crowd. The 20-10 victory left Auburn one step away from the Sugar Bowl. This was one of the Tigers' proudest moments of 1988. But Coach Dye cautioned it would be meaningless without a similar effort against Alabama in two weeks at Legion Field. I, I don't know, but in talking with different people around the, around the conference, uh, I'm not so sure that Alabama's not the best football team in the conference, uh, besides you. And you'll have to determine that on the football field. And, uh, but it, we've got a tremendous, tremendous challenge, getting ready for Alabama. Put yourself in their place, the frustrations and the anxieties that they've been through. They got to be hungry. The worst thing in the world that could happen to you is for them to be hungrier than you are when you get there. The Crimson Tide stood between the Auburn Tigers and their second straight Southeastern Conference Championship. The Crimson Tide. At Auburn, that says it all.
all the pressure sat squarely on Auburn's shoulders. For without a victory over Alabama, all the accomplishments of 1988 would be meaningless. You know, going out there, we really, we really wanted to win the game. Uh, everything was on the line for us. It was either going to make or break our season. So uh, I think everyone had that in the back of their mind. And, and we played great together. And uh, we got some big plays. And our defense played great. And I think uh, you know, that was the key to us winning. This was a day for character, a day for teamwork, and for pride. This was a day for champions. Wynn Lyle put the Tigers on the board with a 25-yard field goal in the first quarter. Then All-SEC defensive tackle Ron Stallworth took over. His 13 tackles and four sacks, including one for a safety, earned him SEC and National Player of the Week honors. The Tide gave up ground grudgingly. But late in the third quarter, the offense marched the last 77 yards to New Orleans. Led by Slack, Tillman, and the game's leading rusher for the second straight year, Stacy Danley. Fullback Vincent Harris went over the top, scoring the touchdown that put the Tigers back in the Sugar Bowl. The 15-10 triumph gave the Tigers their third straight win over Alabama and their first back-to-back -back conference titles. Before the team left for New Orleans, all-American Tracy Rocker was recognized as the outstanding lineman in all of college football, winning both the Outland and Lombardi trophies. He now joins Pat Sullivan, Bo Jackson, and Zeke Smith as one of the most honored players in Auburn history. From the moment he arrived in 1985, he made things happen, leading all SEC linemen in tackles as a freshman. After a knee injury prematurely ended his 1987 season, he came back even stronger, leading the Tiger defense to its finest season ever. I think back when all the when I first started here playing, and a lot of people have helped, you know, and played a role in, the, in me achieving these awards. And you know, and you sit there and it's all individual, but really it's not. And because I I know I played as a team football player. He will be remembered as a soft-spoken leader with the heart of a tiger. He played the game with integrity and class. Most of all, he was a winner. It was fitting that his final game as an Auburn Tiger be in the game he dreamed of most, the Sugar Bowl. January 2nd, 1989, the Superdome rocked as Auburn and Florida State squared off in one of the most exciting games in Sugar Bowl history. Although the Tigers fell short of victory in the final seconds, their effort was typical of a year filled with courage, commitment, and above all, character. This team set new standards of achievement for a program that in the last six years has won more games, more championships, and more bowl games than any other SEC team. They brought credit to themselves and to Auburn University. Wherever they go and whatever they do, they'll always be champions. Champions forevermore. And for those who return, yet another goal lies ahead.